The rapid advance of science presents us with the hope of eventual cures for terrible diseases. And with profound moral and ethical dilemmas. In the complex debate over embryonic stem cell research, we must remember that real human lives are involved. Both the lives of those with diseases that might find cures from this research and the lives of the embryos that will be destroyed in the process. We think the first uh, diseases that will be uh, approached and cured most likely are neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, spinal cord injuries, uh, so those kind of paralysis kind of things. We think we can attack those pretty easily with stem cells and robustly. We're learning about cancer in ways that we never thought. Maybe the best way to treat a tumor is not necessarily to kill it, but to change it. What if you could turn it into something less harmful? And that's kind of a strategy that our lab has adopted. Stem cells can be used for, uh, for basic research and to study the effects of certain chemicals on, on human tissues. They can be used to study uh, the development of organisms, uh, humans or animals. Uh, they can also be used uh, to develop tissues and other uh, products in, in a field called regenerative medicine. So the I ultimate idea is sort of re using stem cells to grow replacement organs, for example, for a diseased uh, pancreas for someone suffering from diabetes, as an example. There is really no substitute for human embryonic stem cells if we're serious about achieving the objective of regenerative medicine, which is to go way beyond the reach of pills and scalpels to achieve permanent cure by injecting directly into tissues that are damaged by diseases or injuries. We engineer the cell in such a way that it thinks it's making a new body part. So when it finds itself in the environment of a spinal cord or a heart or a pancreas or a liver or a, a joint of the body, it simply is doing what it's normally programmed to do by nature, to form a new tissue of a particular kind that we signaled it to make. stem cells, the best way to describe them as a blank slate. Um, they're individual cells that we get from um, fertilized embryos, so when the sperm meets the egg um, and they start dividing, the cells divide. When we, what we get as cells in there that have the ability, each cell can make every tissue in your body, meaning each cell can make skin, muscle, heart, or uh, brain, you know, anything you can think of in your human body, each cell has the potential to make any of those. That's what an embryonic stem cell is. The, the, the major ethical controversy has, has surrounded the use of embryonic stem cells. And more specifically, it's the controversy surrounding the use of embryos to obtain the embryonic stem cells. So a lot of the, the controversy has to do with how we get the stem cells that are found in embryos. The real tricky part here is that because one of the sources of stem cells is the human embryo, it is still impossible to tease out those cells from the early embryo without not just harming the embryo but actually killing the embryo. So the question of embryonic stem cell research is obviously connected with the question of manipulation and moreover exploitation of embryos. The, the issue that gets the most attention in the ethical debate surrounding embryonic stem cell uh, research is the moral status of the embryo. 
and whether or not we should accord it full moral respect as we would a human person. The problem concerning the extraction of stem cells from the embryo obviously brings us back to the question, what exactly is a human embryo? No one doubts that these are human cells. Uh, there is debate whether we can say that it is a human person. You know, people like uh, the president morally equated embryos as having the same moral status as, uh, as a full adult human, and that destroying the embryo was akin to murder. But you ask anyone that holds that theory, you know, um, do you find freezing embryos wrong, like storing them? And they go, no, well then, under your own logic, freezing a baby would be completely permissible as well. So they're not morally, I mean, they're not, we look at them as entities. What is at stake here is the notion that an embryo has a special relationship with human personhood. There is no question, uh, even from a purely biological point of view, that a human embryo is, first of all, human life. It is human life because, of course, it is not the life of a pig or the life of a tree or the life of a rabbit. Obviously, the human embryo has human DNA and a full DNA complement at that and therefore can be certainly qualified as human life. I often give slides, I put up a chicken, uh, a human, mouse, you know, cow, whatever, those embryos at the same developmental stage, and I ask people to point out the human embryo. No one can. No, even with good training, it's hard to find them. It's because it's just a collection of cells. And we treat them with respect, and, but they're yielding tons of secrets about the human development and disease. Amazing. So for us, it's not even an issue. We, we follow the law, we don't break any rules, and we respect them. One can clearly see that the ethical uh, stickiness of embryo research and therefore of human stem cell uh, research and embryonic stem cell research uh, is really the question, what do we do with nascent human life? When the people go get IVF, in vitro fertilization, and they test tube baby kind of thing, they grade the embryos that they make, and the best ones go into, the top 5% go into the woman's uterus, and only maybe one or two makes a baby. Inevitably, there's about 150 embryos that don't get used. Those embryos get frozen in liquid nitrogen, but eventually that liquid nitrogen runs out. If you don't pay your bill or whatever, you they get thrown away, so they're destroyed one way or the other. We just look at it as like, at least it's going to a good cause. The ethical issues in embryonic stem cell research and technology uh, go beyond just the moral status of the embryo. They include the suffering and vulnerability of patients who could potentially benefit from this research, whether it's embryonic stem cell research or adult stem cell research. I, I have a, a friend who works on embryonic stem cells and uh, research and she tells me, you know, uh, when you look at these embryo under the microscope, you know as a biologist that this is not just one cell or a bunch of cells like all the others. You know that there's something in there, there's a mystery in there that ought to be taken seriously.